Hi, welcome to the Gear Garage. My name is Zach. This is my little internet show by Whitewater Things. And this, in this episode, sorry, I need to enunciate my words better. In this episode, I want to talk about flipping ore boats, specifically light ones. As ore boats get heavier and heavier, it takes more advanced techniques. But to learn how to flip them, you kind of want to start with lightweight ones, like smaller ones like the one I'm going to show here. I'm going to flip and reflip this boat to the IRF standard. So I have to do a flip and reflip within two minutes. When it's upside down, I have to count heads. I'll kind of walk you through it. But I feel like this is a skill we should be practicing often. When you go on the river with your friends once in a while, do a practice flip and reflip. I know it's not that fun to get in the water. I know you kind of look embarrassing, but it's a skill that takes practice. And when it happens, you, your mind needs to just jump on what to do. You can't think about what you learned on a video or in a class. It kind of needs to be muscle memory. So I'd highly encourage you to practice this with your lightweight boat. So here it goes, and I'll kind of talk through it. We're going to watch this once in real time and once with a bunch of pauses. An IRF test, an International Rafting Federation test, begins the moment you touch the right side of the boat. You have to jump in the boat on your own, unassisted, and flip the boat back over. I'm going to use a, a flip line that I have in my PFD. It has a black diamond magnetron locking carabiner, so it goes on really easy. If you get back in the boat, I choose to get on the boat on the ends of the boats. It's just easier for me. Getting on an upside down boat, I find is the hardest thing. So this is where I struggle and I try to take my time here so I don't mess this up. It's, it's pretty hard. Now, once you're on the upside down boat and as part of an IRF test, you have to count, pr pretend to count all your passengers that fell out. So right now I'm, see I'm pointing, I'm pretending to count all my people that fell out. And then I'm going to go for the, the flip back over. And the, the IRF test ends when you get yourself back in the boat. It's the third time you've pulled yourself back in a boat. It's tough. So this is always, for me, also a struggle, especially in cold water like the white salmon. I'm usually pretty winded. So let's break that down a little bit and talk about the difficult parts. Step one is getting in the boat. I like to take one of my arms on the handle and straighten that arm up and then grab something inside the boat with the other arm, grabbing their frame with their right hand. It's just hard, it's hard to do, and with practice you get better at it, but it's never really easy. Now, I'm, like, like earlier, I'm going out to grab my flip line, attaching it onto a D-ring, and with an oar boat, I'm gonna lean back, but I wanna lean away from the center of those boats. Those oars flopping around can hit me, so I'm jumping back and towards the stern of the boat here, so there's a minimal chance that those oars can hit me in the head. And now I'm going to swim to the end of the boat. Some people can get up on the sides, but it's hard. So I'm going to swim to the end of the boat and try to get back on the ends. And I do that by I'm putting my fingers up there. I'm trying to get fingers in drain holes. And it's hard to do. It takes a lot of finger strength and it hurts. And I'm going to push up with my left arm there on the handle to make it straight. And this is never pretty. This is always hard, difficult. You're in awkward positions. You can see I'm struggling right there. It's, it's tough. But eventually you kind of find your position and you get up. The key here is take your time. And the key, as I said before, is practice. So now I'm looking for my flip line. I'm doing my IRF counting of the heads. And a key point here is to look back at what you're flipping onto. There might be a rock in there. Here it's the shore. I might flip on the shore or shallow water. So I want to look for a safe landing spot, especially with the oars. I'm going to go deep in the water here, and I'm going to push again out and then away from the center of the boat. I want to go deep, so if those oars do flap around, I'm underwater when they do. And it's a struggle getting back in the boat a third time like this, and that's why it's so good to practice and have your technique, because at this point, I am pretty tired. And again, this is where most people really struggle. This is hard to do. There's technique you can use to get better, but it does take physical strength. So this is something worth practicing. The real struggle with flipping boats is it's not hard flipping them over, it's hard getting back in them. So that's flipping light or boats. I personally try to do it as often as I can. I want to reiterate how important it is to practice it. I know you're gonna get cold and not want to go in the water and have a bunch of excuses, but this is something I would really encourage you to practice doing at the end of the day. Sometime when the river's flat, you feel comfortable, 
it's really good practice. So that's it for this episode. If you have things to add, questions, thoughts, add them in the comments below, and I'll see you next time. Thanks.